Okay, I've recorded this a few times now, so I don't want to ramble too much. I just want to get to some basics here. Um, the task manager pulled up. This the Windows Home Server build is now complete, and uh, I put it inside of a ARC ARK ITX case. Um, case is what you kind of expect for about thirty-five, forty dollars. Not the greatest case in the world, but more than sufficient for a Windows Home Server case, or if you're building a case for your parents or something like that, someone who's not going to be use the their computer or you put a lot of use on it definitely a great case for that um, anyway this is the task manager the D510 is actually a 64-bit CPU I did not know that until I logged into it the other thing I noticed on the login screen is that you can actually boot from your network so if never tried that before but supposedly if you have an um, operating system somewhere on your network um, you can point it, point to it, and boot from that. Probably not the fastest way of getting things done, but it'd be interesting to play with. That's for certain. Um, as you're looking at, you can see that there looks like four cores are up. The D510 is actually a dual core CPU, so it has two cores, but each one of the cores is hyper-threaded. So what you're looking at are four threads. The reason why this is important is there's a lot of software these days that are written that can take advantage of these threads. And what it kind of does, it breaks them down and gives them like division of labor as far as processing is concerned. And you get a little bit better performance out of your system. Um, right now we're also running it, you know, this thing is running in pretty much an idle right now. It's hitting, using about 687 megabytes of memory. I put two gigabytes of RAM in there and I would pretty much recommend for two gigabytes is about the minimum you want to put into any computer these days um, I'm sure things could run on one gigabyte I'm sure the Windows Home Server could run on one gigabyte um, but I would say it's worth a little extra money and getting both two gigabytes modules um, you can also get up to four gigabytes in this motherboard do I recommend it mm, I don't know for right now I don't really see the need for it but they might be coming out with a new version of Windows Home Server and that might need a little bit more um, RAM depending on what it's going to be doing. On the right you're looking at something called Pureform Specy. That's P-I-R-F-O-R-M-S-P-E-C-C-Y. It's um, something that Windows Weekly with Paul Throt recommended. It was Paul's software pick of the week. You can see it's a version 1 beta. What's basically does is it breaks down the com complete system. It tells you more about your computer than you probably ever wanted to know. Some of the things it does well, other things uh, it needs help with. Um, as far as the operating system is concerned, it identifies it as the Microsoft Windows Server 2003, which technically w Windows Home Server is. Um, it's a 32-bit operating system and you can see that I have Service Pack 2 installed. Uh, it did identify the Intel Atom CPU and if you look at it, it correctly identified them as the D510, incorrectly identified as Diamondville processor which is 45 nanometers when this is really a Pineville, um, Pineview processor that's 32 nanometers. Um, the other thing I, but I do like about it is if you were to click on this little gauge right here, it shows it's 37 degrees Celsius and um, so you can see that uh, you know, for a computer that's not doing a heck of a lot, it's not using a lot of electricity and also isn't generating a lot of heat. So, kind of like that. Um, tells you more about the CPU, more information you could ever really want to know about your CPU as far as what all the cores and all the threads are doing. Neat stuff. Um, the motherboard, it kind of gives some basic information about the motherboard. Um, talks about the BIOS and I, uh, the um, other thing that I might find of interest is that the graphics, as far as the, um, the GPU is concerned, if you were to run this program on any other computer that doesn't have an embedded um, Northbridge into the die of the uh, CPU, you would see um, a temperature gauge sitting right around here. But since it's part of the CPU die, it's all over here. It doesn't measure the graphics independently. Um, 
The one thing I did have a question about, it says 7 megabytes as far as memory is concerned. It seems awfully low. I don't know if that is true or not. Um, what that might mean is that if you're running some heavy duty graphics, it's would this CPU could have a hard time at it. I, I kind of doubt it's that small, but I'll check into that. Uh, the hard drives I ran on here is the Western Digital Green. It's a one terabyte drive, and of course it's running about 39 degrees Celsius spinning. Um, other than that, nothing else. I picked up the audio, but there's no optical drives and really no peripherals on here as well. It's a lean and mean build. As you can see uh, by the temperature gauges, it's definitely keeping cool. And um, my overall impression of Windows Home Server is that it's just an incredible little, little build. I mean, it's one of those things, unless you really know someone who has one or you can get your hands on it, I don't know if you really can completely appreciate how it's simple, um, extremely simple. It's something that, you know, people who are not really technically um, proficient can work with. But at the same time, it is built off the Server 2003 platform, so it can do a heck of a lot. Um, so it's kind of a perfect match for this Intel D510 motherboard. It's two things that look to the outside observer to be under, you know, kind of like a lightweight, but really it packs a mean punch. I'm really impressed with the CPU, the D510 at Atom CPU. Really a great processor. The motherboard is beautiful, and um, overall, you know, when you put it together with Windows Home Server, it's a great combination. Uh, you can go out and buy Windows Home Server pre-made systems. Um, HP makes some, the Media Center, which are nice, but what's nice about putting your own Windows Home Server together yourself is that you can configure your hard drives the way you want them to be. You can pick out which hard drives you want to put in there. You can do a lot of things that, um, of course, you get to pick out which motherboard you want. Uh, the Intel D510 motherboard is great, it's, but there are other ones out there. Asus and some other manufacturers make motherboards with the same processor. And, you know, it's going to be a great, I guess each one has its advantages and disadvantages, so check them out carefully. Me personally, I like the Intel motherboards. I find that they just hold up. They're not an overclocker's dream. I don't really overclock my motherboards. I just like simplicity. Occasionally, I hear people complain about the driver support or a variety of other things uh, from Intel. But uh, since I switched over to mostly Intel or Asus motherboards, I've been extremely happy and had very few problems. So. If you have any questions, feel free to write to me. My name is Steve. I can be reached at LTISteve at Verizon.net. And hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching.